Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me this file from South Africa. And they've got fast cutting, which is the red lines, engraving, which are the blue, and cutting, which is the black. And they're very, very new to laser engraving. And I would never want to engrave this. It would be very hard to read to me. So that's just a personal suggestion. So just let's, let's look at it here. And what I always do, I grab it and move it out of the way. Well, you've got two copies setting on top of each other and that could cause you a problem. And then we'll grab it again and move it and you can see there's just one copy left. First of all, you need whatever size this is in millimeters. Um, you need to adjust your page size before, I don't know what brand of laser they have. But I would, I'm gonna get this, matter of fact, out of the way of that page so it won't interfere with the viewing. So I would turn all this black and solid. And if you're gonna, I don't know what kind of laser you have or whatever, but in, you could do this in a two-step. You could actually select the black line and cut all the way out. And I'd, that would be the last thing I'd do. I'd engrave it. And she has fast cutting, so it's just going to mark it, which is vector engraving, which is pretty cool and a lot faster. But you can also, there are some uh, lasers and programs that have uh, color mapping that you could do both at one job, but you could select that. And I have a couple of videos on that. So we're gonna go up to object and group and ungroup all. And then I'm gonna grab this and it's not a text anymore, it's turned into a curve. And it's also not even complete. Some of it is like that. So all you have to do is take that item and left click, right click, and then you have a black engraveable boy. And since you are new, you wanna be using RGB, which is a truer black. I don't know why that says, yeah, that's RGB black. So you could just change all that and make it work. And I do have a little bit of suggestion in here that I would think make your project look better. Because of this bottom line is curved, you could make that particular text curve, and I thought I'd just show everybody because it's a little bit different. And we're gonna set our nudge factor on 60 millimeters, which I have no idea how far it is. Hitting it four times. And get it out of the way. Now, I'm gonna take the Smart Fill tool, I'm gonna fill in that spot. I'm gonna nudge that over quite a bit. I'm gonna left click, right click. So now we have that item. We are gonna take, go to object and, no, we don't even have to do that. We're gonna select them all with the shape tool and go right here and break apart. Cause we don't want these other parts of the line. We don't need that. All we want is that bottom curvature. And this is just a suggestion, I'm not saying you have to do it. Your, your text is gonna have to be a little bit smaller and you're gonna have to do it. You can see the kind of curvature of that line versus your text now. So let's retype that out. And also, you've got vertical text set on so you can control comma, you know, bring it back to horizontal text. And I'm just gonna type it out real quick. I should have already had this done. Don't worry about the center. Um, justified. Whoop, I didn't put a comma. All right, we'll go ahead and center justify them to go right here. Center justify them, and then they're like that. Now, we need to make it a little bit smaller, whatever I type. And for the video, I'm gonna make, it, make sure it fits on that line. So I'm gonna nudge my line back over some more. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna kind of rotate it. And the heartbeat line 
might not quite fit, so let's make it a little bit smaller. And you could always make it bigger in a minute to bring it back to that size. And also the, the, the brain stem part is, is highlighted more or darker, bold. So we're going to go control K and it's going to break it apart. At that time, we could make brainstorm whatever we want, make it a little bit bigger, make it uh, bold. But we're going to take this and now we're going to set our nudge factor on something less like 10. And we're going to take this line and you can always tell if that line by just moving out of the way, even though it looks like the handles are way over here. We're going to go up to text and fit text to path. Don't worry about if it's in the center. You'll see the center right there. Now, with that selected, hold down your shift key and select that and go up to object and break text apart, which is K also. Now, don't move your line. Move your word. Now, take this line. Text, fit text the path, put on that line, make sure it just fits. Shift select the, the our path, go to object, control K. Now let's move, the, whoop, we don't want to move the line, we just want to move the text. Now we'll do brainstorm. We're just trying to get a little bit of that curve. And this, like I said, this is personal preference, but I think it'd make your project look a little bit better and I've never really done text to curve with three lines, so I wanted to see if it would work. So I'm gonna go Control K, now they're broken apart. Now we can take our font and just kind of move it up out of the way, move that one up out of the way, and you notice that they're not particularly uh, where they need to be, so we can take this and just move it into place. That line's a little bit longer, so we'll put it there. And then what you can do is take the whole thing. Let's put our nudge factor back on 60, which wasn't enough, but we'll nudge it over to our text box. Now it's not big enough. It is not in the right place, but we've got it all grouped together so we can make it bigger and we can move it along the, that to me looks a little better with the curvature but that's just personal preference. You know, you can make it quite a bit bigger to try to match the, um, you see, I didn't, I didn't have them still grouped together. Whenever you have a situation where you've got an item like that, get your um, freehand pick tool and get off your item and start drawing and just go around your text. That way it will only select your text, control G and group it together, and then we can make it still bigger still. But it still follows that curve. Now these are not text, but you can left click, right click, and you have, now I use probably a different font than this because I don't know what this font is. It looks like Arial. So back to engraving this, you want to do your black line last. So let's say, let's make this thing smaller and make it fit. I don't know what 412 millimeters actually is. Let's say this is your laser bed. There's two things you can do. If you do not have a way to select it, we've got our nudge factor still set on 60. We're going to move that out of the way. Now, if you had a, a laser that would do combo jobs where you could do the printing and the cutting, and that's another thing with this, that's a hairline, so that's going to cut out. That might have been your plan the whole way, but it's not going to work because the inside of your O's, the inside of the A, the inside of the P is going to fall out. So if you did a combo job, those would cut out. So when you do this, right or left click fill, but then right click no fill or no outline. And then that way it won't cut out. Let's just go ahead and do all these other two. You can select that one, hold down the shift key 
and select that one. We're going to right click, left click. Now, if your laser has a combo job where you can print, so cut this. This is a vector line. It is a hairline. You know, do it at 100 power, at, depending on how thick your wood is, at, at 100 speed. You know, just go through there and mark it. Then what you could do, our nudge factor is still the same. Nudge that out of the way. We clicked it four times, one, two, three, four. Now you can laser this 100 speed at 10 power, or whatever you need to do to get through your wood. And then that's what it's going to look like. Anyway, I hope that helped them a little bit. Thank you for watching.